Hey everyone, RC Peck here with Ask RC, and I want to talk to you about income. And specifically, I want to talk about how to invest for income. And what's different about this video is I'm going to point out probably the probably the number one flaw that investors make when they start looking for income. And I'm going to go into the reasons why they make this mistake, this flaw, and why they're not able to see it and why, why they just keep creating this mistake over and over again, never realizing it is slowing the stability and the certainty and the comfortableness of their future. So let's get into it. Okay, now here's the thing, and this is gonna come as maybe a shock to a lot of people, but here's the thing to avoid. Do not invest. Okay, do not invest in any ETF with the word dividend in it. So I wanna say that again to you because it sounds almost um, weird or hypey or like a hook, like, okay, what's he, gonna, what's he gonna sell me? No selling here. I'm gonna tell you exactly why this is expensive and dangerous to your income and your stability, especially when you're moving into retirement or in retirement. So let me be clear, all right? This video is about investing for income. And what I'm saying to you is the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to avoid ETFs with the word dividend in it. So if it's called dividend fill in the blank or dividend and in income or income and dividend or something in dividend or dividend and whatever, you want to skip it because it's going to slow down the protection, the security, the certainty, the stability of your portfolio. And I'm gonna give you specific examples and then I'm gonna tell you why this is happening. So I went to go look and I, I just pulled up the five largest ETFs with the word dividend in it. So we're talking ETFs that are somewhere between 15 to $53 billion in size. Those are big. That puts them all in the top 30 or 40 ETFs on the planet, okay? Especially the one that's at 53 billion. All five of these, okay, all five of them have the word dividend in it. They, they call them, some, some are called dividend equity, dividend appreciation. They have the word dividend in it. Okay, I wanna talk about why this is a problem. And I'm gonna, first let me show you and then I'll talk about why it's a problem. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, would you, would you have better income? Because here's the standard, you have to at least beat the S&P 500 with its income and its growth, all right? And I looked at the first one. I'm not gonna go through, with, through the names, but I'll tell you the name of the first one. It's VIG called Dividend Appreciation. It fell 31% in the COVID crash. Now the stock market itself fell 34%. So only falling 31, that's not really feeling safe. Now the reason I'm talking about feeling safe is because when people buy something with the, a name of something with the word dividend in it, what they're hearing in their brain is, this is gonna protect my downside. This is gonna give me security. This is gonna give me a regular source of portfolio income. I want a regular source of portfolio income. I dug into one of them and looked at kind of their su summary and literally it said regular source of portfolio income and it pays monthly distributions. These are two phrases or two kind of sets of keywords that is gonna really get someone certainly over 50, for sure someone over 60 go, oh my God, that's what I need to have. Now, I told you um, one of these fell 31%. I'm, I'm starting with the biggest one, 53 billion. Okay, this is dividend appreciation fund. And it went up 58% from the bottom of the market, which happened on March 23rd um, to the recording of this. Now, for reference, I said to you the S&P fell 34%, but went up 67%. So you have this fund that is basically promoting itself as a safer place to be, but it's not. It wasn't and it's not. And that's the best performing one out of all of these, only falling 31% when the market fell 34%. Now to someone in their 60s, that's gonna feel extremely scary. And we're gonna get to why um, ETFs with the word dividend in it underperforming is actually dangerous for your portfolio income. Okay, so just quickly, there was uh, the second biggest was one by Schwab. It had 16 billion. That that had the phrase dividend equity in it. That fell 33 percent and went up exactly what the market went up. So that that's pretty good. Then we had DVY at 14 billion. Okay, that fell 42 percent in the COVID crash. 
42% when the market itself fell 34 and it only went up 58%. Now, I don't want all these numbers to get to be like number soup or alphabet soup, but what I'm pointing out to you is when the market falls and it fell in February and March of 2020, it fell 34%. People are buying ETFs with the word dividend in it because they're thinking it's going to protect their downside, whether it's as dividend and in income, dividend and in fill in the blank, dividend achiever, dividend appreciation, dividend something to make your brain feel safe. What I'm pointing out to you is I looked at the five largest, okay? Uh, the next one was, th th this is the last one, another 14 billion. It fell 35%, went up 62%. So you have the five largest ETFs that basically fell the same or worse as the market and either went up the same or less as the market. That's not more protection. That is not more protection. Now, this is, this is why this matters. When you are 50, 60, or 70, you actually become a worse investor. And the reason is because your career goes away. Your paychecks from your career go away. That regular, consistent income goes away. And when that goes away, it changes your brain. It actually makes your brain um, move away from what it perceives as danger way too fast and stay in things that are actually dangerous way too long. Literally, the human brain becomes a worse investor as their regular income goes away. And so people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, what happens is they see the market crashing or falling, collapsing, imploding, fill in the words you want, and they go, oh no, I can't have this happen again. The people in these ETFs are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're gonna act much different than say someone in their 40s, 30s, or 40s, right? Because they may have, they're going through the same economic situation, but they have 20 or 30 years left of income from their career, okay? And maybe being in the S&P and falling 34% is not a big deal for a 42 year old, but for a 62 or 72 year old it is. So they're gonna behave differently. And collectively, the tens of millions of people that are in these ETFs and mutual funds, it's the same thing. ETFs, mutual funds, they're going to act scared when the market falls. They're gonna get out right near the bottom, which is gonna drive the price even more, you know, even farther, okay? And they're gonna get back in slower. So when you are buying an ETF with the word dividend in it, you're literally bringing in more volatility, more price volatility to your life. And by the way, all the returns I said to you before, those include all the dividend yields from the five largest ETFs. So they were uh, one loss 37%, 31%, 33%, 42%, 35%. percent, And the market itself, itself fell 34%. And so older people are hiding out in these, these, these funds and these corners and these ETFs and these, these you know, baskets of stocks that have the word dividend in it. And it's a very dangerous place. And I think it's actually gonna get more dangerous considering just how low interest rates are. Okay, the other thing I wanna get to before we hit the pause button on this video is when you sell your winners, okay, you cut off the growth of your portfolio. The key thing for getting regular income, right, to getting to creating kind of a regular source of income for your portfolio, right? The key thing is growing your portfolio. You have to actually grow your portfolio. And these ETFs and funds that have the word dividend in it, they're not growing your portfolio as well as just the general overall market. Now, I want to give you an example of a, a different type of ETF. This is an ETF that does covered calls, right? So covered calls, if you don't know, you buy a stock and then you sell a call option against it. And if the stock doesn't go up fast enough to hit the um, target price of the call option, you keep the stock and you keep the premium you sold your call option, your call option at. And that, that premium is your income. So the largest, it's either called a buy right or call option ETF. And the largest one in the country is about $1.7 billion. And it, it does a, a, um, a buy right, which are another way of saying covered calls on the NASDAQ 100. I have my notes down here to look at. And 
here's what's amazing about it. Over the last three years, because I wanted to give it some run, okay, give it a nice runway. So over the last three years, this fund, okay, which which claims it pays monthly distribution, which I, I shouldn't say claim, it probably does distribute it on a monthly basis and it brings in $1.6 billion of funds, okay? Here's the thing. Without that monthly income, over the last three years, it's grown negative 8%. Now, there are a lot of people in this symbol. I'll tell you what it is. It's Q-Y-L-D, Q-Y-L-D. And over the last three years, it's down 8%. Now, they write the call options on the NASDAQ 100. So we have to, as reference, put the same uh, symbol in and give you the same return. So over the last three years, the Qs, the NASDAQ 100, is up 95%. So it's up 103 percentage points more. Now, I, I think you'd have to believe that a portfolio up 100% over three years is better for income than a portfolio that is down negative eight. But the QYLD, it does give you that, today it's giving about a 10 or 11% dividend yield. If you add that yield in over the last three years, that, right, buy right, QYLD, fund is up 27% and the Qs over the exact same time period are up 102%. So about four times more. So that million dollar portfolio would be to 4 million where the other portfolio would just be to a million 270,000. The reason I brought this second example up is because again, people hear covered call, right? People hear, I wanna get the right pay monthly distribution regular source of portfolio income and they get triggered they get they get hijacked into thinking that's where the certainty is and that where and that's where the safety is so the takeaway from this video is if you're looking for stability and certainty and consistency and a regular source of portfolio income and a way to replace your your paycheck right and a way to move your portfolio from accumulation and growth to a portfolio of now it needs to cover my expenses for the rest of my life stay away from funds that have the word dividend in it thanks guys so much please hit the like button if you find this has value for you that makes a difference youtube and google like when you hit the the smash the like button. So thank you for that. And guys, if you love this, I have a couple more videos for you too. So just hang, hang for a second and I'll show you what they are. All right, thanks. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.